Okay, I know my mom is definitely watching this video and she's going to laugh at me. This is actually an item that I did declutter out and then have since gone to repurchase. friends welcome back to my channel today's video is a little bit different i don't think in uh, my almost three years three and a half years i'm not sure how many years in uh my time doing youtube i've never made a favorites video like this i've done like household favorites like amazon organizing stuff i'll link those here if you want to check out more like niche favorites of like things around the house but i've never done just like my general favorites and so welcome to things i didn't declutter i declutter a lot on this channel if you're new here i do homemaking but a lot of decluttering organizing i'm not a minimalist but i like to keep my home as simplified and functional as possible that's like my goal so i don't have a problem growing a big collection of things as long as they serve me and serve me well i don't want to be cleaning up a bunch of junk all the time and so i really try to keep my house simplified that's probably the better word for it not minimalist simplified but i do have a lot of things that i've been loving lately and i wanted to share that along with you guys so i have them spread out all around me almost everything i have like to show you right now but a couple things will have to go somewhere else so let's let's jump right in okay first thing is beauty category i am not like super beauty guru but i do have a couple things i have been loving recently uh, two of them are skincare. One is Clinique's Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. Um, I have the jumbo size. It's really pricey. I think I paid 50 bucks for this, but I've tried other ones. Um, the e.l.f. cleansing one is like $10 for a much smaller jar, but I'm pretty sure this is a better value and it works way better. I have been using this for at least a month now, and can you see... I've like barely made a dent in this. Like this will last me a hot minute. So I have been loving this to take my makeup off. I put it all over my eyes basically before I hop in the shower, use the water from the shower to take it off. Big fan of this. Also a huge fan of this sunscreen. Now I am a little sunscreen girly now. I used to not be super into it. I was the tanning at the beach wanting to get as burnt and tan as possible all in high school. And now I'm starting to pay for it in freckles and like skin spots and just knowing that it's so much more important to protect my skin from the sun. And so every day I use this La Roche-Posay Anti-Helos Fluid Sunscreen Ultra Light 60 SPF. You shake it up. You squirt it in your hands. It's really thin and lightweight and liquidy. I have pretty sensitive skin. It doesn't break me out. I'm huge, huge, huge fan of this. This is actually an empty bottle and I need to go repurchase it. I think it's a little pricey. I think this is about $30, but I will be repurchasing this without a second thought. Like it's a go-to must have and it lasted me quite a while. I also grabbed this from Marshalls a long time ago. It's the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. It's basically lip balm in a tub and I don't love that it's in a tub, but I do love this lip balm. It goes on really smooth. Honestly, I wish I was a lipstick person. I am not. I Okay, lighting changed. We're back in action. I wish I was a lipstick person. I am not, but I do love to put this on my lips. They just look nourished healthy it's like a lip gloss but i know that it's just like moisturizing and stays on longer so a big fan of this and the last thing i've been loving is this maybelline eyeshadow in the shade made for mocha i take this little uh eyebrow eyebrow what word was that eyeshadow brush it's like really really thin really flat and i just dip in this stamp it on as eyeliner i used to like to do a big wing but that took way too much time and this is like the perfect like chocolatey brown that like almost looks black but it's not super intense and using it as an eyeliner gives you like a little bit more definition without the stress of like getting it perfect and everything like it's okay if it's a little bit messy and i've just been doing this every day and feeling a little bit prettier while i do that okay on to a clothing favorite i normally don't have any clothing favorites i am a discount shopping girly my mom taught that to me and saving money finding discount sale rack all of that and i really don't normally go for like high-end nice quality pieces but i'm slowly learning the value of them in my collection like having a solid pair of really nice lululemon workout leggings can replace like five pairs of 15 dollars cheap leggings that i get at amazon or wherever so slowly learning to find what staple pieces i should invest in and then saving up and then buying them and i want to share madewell jeans these specifically are like loose and baggy and they have some rips in the knees i wore them in my last closet declutter and these were not going to be going anywhere they're a little bit pricey but i found them on sale for 75 dollars i think madewell's doing a deal right now where you can turn in an old pair of jeans any jeans and get 20 dollars off a pair of their jeans so look into that if you're looking for a pair but madewell like quality denim that's like made to last made to fit the inside of it has like washing instructions and i never knew this but uh it says like how to care for your jeans it says don't wash them 
um, except every 10 wears. So just like ways to make it be a little bit more lasting and uh, less quick fashion, like not Shein. I never shop at Shein, but like try and not focus on buying like quick fashion that's gonna like fall apart and fade and need to be replaced. I think I'm gonna be asking for another pair or two of these for Christmas um, and just holding on to them for the rest of my life basically. Okay, moving into some household-ish favorites. First thing, I don't even know if you can see, is this acrylic lap desk. So it sits on your lap. I put my laptop on it. You can like work and everything. I don't know if you guys were around last year, but around Thanksgiving last year, my laptop like died, like something sounded wrong with the fan. Took it to Apple. Uh, it needed to be sent off for a whole month to be repaired. And it turns out that something like melted in the fan, like something in the cooling fan to keep my laptop from overheating was broken. Like it got melted or jammed or there was fluff in it. So that's how I learned the hard way that you need to take care of your laptop and it's called a laptop, but you should not have it on your lap as much as you normally do. So I got this or asked it for my birthday. My mom gifted this to me from CB2 and it's been super helpful when I'm working and I know my laptop will be spinning really fast, getting really hot, needing to work super hard. Uh, like when I'm editing videos, I definitely use this for sure. So I'm not having it on a blanket on my lap and just like blocking the airflow. It preserves the quality of your laptop. It's important. It's cute, it's minimal, very multi-purpose. Love this a lot. And again, kind of pricey, but I knew that I wanted something that was pretty and aesthetic. So I definitely asked for this for a birthday gift and I'm a big fan of it and have been loving this recently. And I'm sure my laptop stan is a big fan of this too. Another favorite has been our peel and stick countertops. I shared a whole video where I applied contact paper to our kitchen counters and we have a lot of kitchen counters. And in that video, you heard me be super doubtful if it would work, if I would like it, if I would keep it. And you can definitely tell it's peel and stick paper. Like it's not, it's not just marble. Like there's just no way to make it look like marble. Um, I don't know if you're able to do that yourself, good for you, but I was not able to make it perfect and you can definitely see the flaws in it. But overall, after living with it for maybe a month now, I'm the biggest fan of it. I am so glad I went for it. I'm excited I can just peel it up from our renter kitchen when we move out with no problems. And I'm really glad that right now I can feel like from a distance that I have marble counters and it just makes the kitchen feel a little bit more ours and our home a little bit more like ours. I'm pretty sure everyone knows about Folex by now. Like everyone talks about this, raves about it. It's a stain remover for upholstery, clothing, anything. And guys, it works so well. I've had this for a while now and I've honestly been pulling it out to replace projects that I would pull out my big upholstery cleaner, like the like ones that like has like the vacuum attached to it. This can do the job of that most of the time. I'm sitting on a bench right now that it couldn't save, but I've been able to spot clean carpets, our couch. Like I, this has been a miracle product. So if you don't have this under your kitchen sink, definitely recommend it. I've used it on clothing, on shoes, couches, carpets, benches, like anything you can think of that has a stain, this will probably like fix your problem. I'm also not used to talking this much consecutively in a video. So I hope you guys are not bored of me. I feel like I'm talking a lot. Normally I don't just sit and talk to a camera like this. Okay, I'm gonna be basic for a second. Just give me a chance, listen, hear me out. If you already know about this, just fast forward, I don't know, like a minute, 30 seconds, but my Stanley Quencher, I have loved dearly. I bring it with me on my walks with Maddie when we go out for stroller walks. It fits in the car. I drink this all day long. It comes upstairs and sits on my nightstand at night. I love it very, 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 very much. I'm not sure if they're still hard to get. I actually found mine through uh, Dick's Sporting Goods website. So I got mine there. There's probably different places you can find if they're out of stock. Something about it, the handle, the straw, all of it. I don't have like the fancy new version that has like something on the handle, just like the original version. And it's worth the hype. And going along with this, I have this attachment for our stroller, which looks kind of weird. And it's a cup holder and a phone holder that clips on to your stroller. It works for a lot of different kinds. We have an Up a Baby stroller that we love, but it doesn't have any cup holders or storage or organization like built into the handlebar. So this just clips right on. My Stanley water bottle will fit right there. Do I have my phone? Yes. And then my phone slides right in there, right next to my handlebar. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I think this is like $10 on Amazon and it's one of my favorite things. Maddie and I go on walks every day, multiple times a day. We both enjoy it. I listen to a podcast. Maddie gets to chew on some toys, see the neighborhood, see the dogs running around. Bucky always comes with us, but I have loved, loved this for being on my stroller and making that walk a little bit more enjoyable. Now, very quickly, gonna touch on some baby favorites. Honestly, there's just two right here. Um, not for everybody. Sorry if you don't have a baby, but number one, this stacking ring toy. It was a gift from my mom. She just like sent it from Amazon. And this has been a 
smashing success with Maddie for months. Normally, like, there's toys that she just gets tired of or, like, she'll play with, like, 20 seconds and want to move on to the next one. This one she is fascinated with and has been for months. So there's, just like, a bunch of little rings that go on here. They're all different weights, textures. I don't know. It's just a really great toy. They all stack on and off of this thing. We call this her lightsaber. Sometimes I'll just plop a couple rings and throw that in my diaper bag to have toys on the go and she loves all the rings. Like this is a smashing hit success toy. If you don't have this for your baby, definitely recommend trying out. Maddie cannot get enough. The other thing that I found recently is um, more of a store than any specific favorites, and that is Marshalls for baby books. So these uh, Sandra Boynton books are like the books we read to Maddie before nap time and for, before bedtime. And at Target or Walmart, they're like $8, which isn't terrible, but they're literally half the price for brand new books. Like the same exact books are half the price at Marshalls. Now the going to bed book is what we read every night before she goes to sleep, and it's four dollars marshall's so that's my favorite spot to get books they also have holiday books there of course so we've got this little halloween book that says trick or treat little pumpkin it has a little finger puppet like are you kidding me that's so cute this one was a little bit pricier at five dollars but i saw it at walmart for eight like just cheaper it's just you're saving money if you go there we also grabbed a uh thanksgiving book and I can't wait to go back every season to pick up a few more. I'm already dreaming of the Christmas books we're going to pick up and incorporate into our little reading before like nap time and bedtime routine. So Marshall's just to find really great deals on baby books has been a smashing hit. Let me make sure I'm about to get to my last items, but I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, I missed one beauty item. Okay, I know my mom is definitely watching this video and she's going to laugh at me. This is actually an item that I did declutter out and then have since gone to repurchase. So I'm not always perfect at decluttering and <laughs> I will say in my defense, when my mom bought me this item, I didn't need it. But now I need it and I'm glad that I found that this works. And they are these purple pumice stones. Now, if you don't have uh, like flaky dry skin on your heels or your feet at all, this won't apply to you. My mom gifted me these for Christmas one year and my feet were in like prime shape. Like I had never needed a pumice stone. Well, now I do. Uh, my feet are a little bit crusty and I saw these at Marshall's once again. So they were on sale. I think I paid $5 for all four of these. One is in my shower right now. And what you do is after your shower, like take your full shower, your feet are gonna get a little bit softer, the dead skin's a little bit easier to get off. That's why they like wait at the like uh, nail salon for like you to soak your feet, is it like soaks the dead skin. And then you're gonna go in with these bad boys and you are gonna scrub away, it doesn't hurt, it just gets caught in this. Little purple pieces fall off, but it just goes down the drain fine. And they will make your feet baby smooth cannot get these enough, cannot handle them enough. Like, please go find the purple pumice stones. And if you have nasty feet at the end of your shower, treat yourself to this and you will be amazed. It's like literally a pedicure in 20 seconds. Just add that to your shower routine and thank me later. Okay, and now the last thing I'm gonna talk about is books. If you've been following for a while, you know that books have been my favorite thing recently. I've been obsessed, I've been reading like crazy. I can't be stopped. I also don't have a ton of like five star reads recently, but I have a couple that I think are good enough to share with you. So not all of these are like five star, like top of the line books. I just haven't had that many of them recently. So if you've had any five star reads that you've been finding recently, let me know down in the description bar. But first book I wanna recommend <laughs> is the One Year Chronological Bible. This was a Christmas gift two years ago for my mother-in-law, and it basically just breaks down the Bible into daily reading segments for every day of the year. Here, you can see May 4th, and then it just gives you reading for like one or two pages. It takes no more than like 10 minutes. So it's a really manageable way to get your Bible time in. I've been enjoying this. Oh, I forgot the interesting part about this version is it's not just the entire Bible, like beginning to end broken up by days. It puts it in chronological order. So it takes the passages as best as possible. So you're reading the Bible chronologically. Another Christian-based Book that I think you should read no matter your faith. I just read this in literally an hour. It's a very, very, very tiny book called Crazy Busy by Kevin DeYoung. And I was <laughs> not expecting this book to be what it was. I picked it up not looking for like parenting advice or like not like trying to pick up a book for that. Like I just figured it was about being busy and productivity and like resting and like that kind of stuff. And there is a small chapter in this book about parenting that just slapped me across the face. Like <laughs> that sounded really aggressive. It didn't slap me across the face, but it was exactly what I needed to read 
without knowing I needed to read it. And it just kind of gave me permission to stop stressing and obsessing and ruining motherhood. I have been very stressed about a lot of motherhood decisions. I've ranted about this on Instagram too, but I've just been super stressed about every little decision. Like I had really, really bad anxiety regarding Madeline's sleep and sleep training. And do we do that? Or does she sleep in the crib? Or like, do, do we co-sleep? Like all of those decisions, like drove me insane like definitely definitely anxiety like horrible horrible feelings about that and not all of the, the like baby decisions after that have been as bad as that but a lot of them have caused me stress like right now she's nine months old and i'm like do i need to cut out the pacifier at 12 months like how are we going to start weaning off of breastfeeding like those decisions have been keeping me up at night and stressing me out like unbelievably so and this book just kind of gave me permission to be like don't stress out about it. Like, it's okay to let it go. Your kid's gonna be fine. You're a great parent. The fact that you're worrying about this proves what great of a parent you are, and it's okay to, like, do your best that day and then go to sleep and then not spend your entire night worrying about it, Googling about it, trying to do better about it. Like, you can just rest in the day being good and tomorrow being a new day and there being fresh mercy in that day and just moving on. So this book gave me a lot of, uh, I don't know the word for it. This book gave me permission to just chill out and I needed to hear it and it was a great read and it's super, super quick read. Like I read it in an hour. And now onto a much lighter note, I'm gonna get onto some fiction reads. Uh, I've got two series and a standalone. I'll start with the standalone. Paris is always a good idea. If you don't know about me, I actually met my husband while studying abroad in Europe. I spent four months in Vienna, Austria, traveling all over the place. We did go to Paris and um, any of these books that kind of like travel all over Europe or a little bit uh, eat, pray, love-ish, I love because I just want to go and like experience those places through the writer's words. Like there are so many places that I want to go to in the world now just because I've read about the plays and it's been described beautifully. So I saw the word Paris on this and I immediately added to my Amazon cart and it was such a fun light read. I think she goes to Scotland. No, no, no. She goes to Ireland, France, and Italy. And then I think she's based out of Boston. So it was just fun to read all like the different places. A cute little romance book. Recommend this for sure. The Inheritance Game is a trilogy that I flew through. It was so good. It's like, a, if you've seen the movie Knives Out, it's like the book version of that. It's a like YA uh, fiction, mystery, puzzle solving, riddle type book. Really, really fun, fast paced, quick and easy read. I flew through all three of these. And then the last one is one of the most recent books I read is The Red Queen. There are four books total in this series. I'm on book two now. This book was so good. Another YA like dystopian fantasy, not dystopian, but like there's like the red bloods and the silver bloods and like the silver bloods are superior and they have powers and magic and stuff. And then there's this red blood girl who ends up in like a silver palace and like suddenly she has powers, which like is unheard of. And like a bunch of chaos happens, queens, kings, ruling, very, very, very good book. Fun, light read. Not light, but a fun and easy read. Um, if you want to know more books that I'm reading, I'm always sharing those over on Goodreads along with quick little reviews, not really in-depth or anything serious, but just like giving it a star rating and then uh, also sharing what I'm currently reading. So let me know if you are missing out on any five-star books below. I think I'm done talking. My camera's told me that I've been going for dropping things. My camera says I've been talking for 23 minutes straight and I know that nobody in the world wants to hear me talk for that long, especially not me. So I'm going to sign off here. Thanks so much for listening. These are the things I didn't declutter. Let me know down in the comments what your favorites are right now. <laughs> Favorite book, makeup item, home item, whatever you're loving. I'd love to hear about it and maybe check it out myself. And I want to thank you guys for hanging out. I already did that. I'm rambling. Like, subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye. Trying to please everyone who's around me I've been putting on my face my